So this is a bigger one and indeed uh, 360 watt. So definitely bigger than this one, which got the water down from the cellar with the small pump. Whereas this one is getting the hot water from the roof, from under the solar panel. And we have the bigger pump at 12 volt, still running at 8.2 volt. And so here you see that's 20 volt. 0.5 coming from uh, from the underneath the solar panel. It's just one solar panel. I, I tried all four solar panels, but I really burst my uh, broke my solar panel that was uh, down, and the pressure underneath was way too much. So 25.5 20 degrees Celsius coming in. 20.1 is still going out. And, and that's not nice. There's still there's a riff, the what's going to the compressor is still only 5.4. So here, this is again a simple water tank. <laughs> it's a very simple. You just wrap the, the copper uh, tubes with uh, with this foam. Then two of these plastic. A uh, very thin plastic for the water protection, then outside again this foam, so that this foam here is protected from the inside and the outside, because it's very difficult to, to find a to find a box that's eight centimeters wide, uh, deep and, and thirty centimeters wide. So I had to do it this very uh, rough way. Here again, that's you know already this, so this is uh, heat going out uh, yeah, here, thirty-two. 0.9 between going out and room temperature that's 32.4 and here okay it's a bit mehr, more air than uh, the machine below and now so you see here the again the styrofoam and underneath here these holes that the, the air goes over the hot compressor and sucked out here and yeah, the big problem again is this heat exchanger. I, I this is a broken one, which only gets uh, frozen down here because there's nearly no uh, uh, gas inside. So I, I had the idea to get uh, rip this apart, and but the emperor told me that this uh, copper here inside is very thin. So uh, if I would remove this aluminium here. To really get the water directly in contact with these copper uh, uh, tubes, then uh, it might break. And so I, I did not go on with this concept to simply take a second and let this uh, um, heat up by the water from from the roof. But I made uh, this uh, copper hose, three meters of copper. Uh, as you can see it here, 10 millimeters one millimeter thick and I did the calculations and really it was four three meters of this copper and one degree Celsius would uh, had have a heat transfer of uh, don't know two or one hundred thousand kilowatt or no one hundred kilowatt or so I thought this would definitely uh, be enough but uh, if you see if I simply measure now the water uh, in the tank, so you see the water also goes down, and therefore this nice 20 volt at 20 degrees Celsius coming from the roof uh, do not really heat the water, and, and so it's, I don't really understand this. So because it's a very simple formula to, to calculate the heat transfer uh, based on, on the material, that's 372 watt per square meter per meter. And so that's still something to be solved to really get a good heat exchange uh, without, you see, uh, taking this machine apart because that's, that's the nice thing about this dehumidifier. It's a very compact heat pump. You see, you don't have to uh, put in some new gas or get out the old one and solder 
a heat exchanger, you can simply dance the things a bit. Um, if these coils, you see, you have to simply, like a spring, pull them apart and then you can um, get them lo um, long enough to uh, get them in a new location. And now here yeah, we can see what's the temperature of this machine. 65, that's the maximum I got for now. It's definitely, definitely enough to heat uh, this tank. And so you see, it's, that's why it's here below, because the tank, and the tank still has uh, here, that's the for circulation. So I uh, want to just take the hot water out there and go down to the circulation, but with a couple of pipes that I simply solder onto this one. So this is, uh, heat is coming from below, going here. And so the, the hot water from the tank would go down. That's perfect. So it could down up to 60 centimeters. And that again, <laughs> to my calculations, <laughs> would be way enough to, to get, uh, let's say 200, 300 watt uh, of this machine uh, into the hot, hot water tank. That's why you see that's right here, and then it would also for the noise be better. So if I enclose every everything, and so you see, we now have three three hundred and sixty four. So let's say the twenty watt for the ventilator. So three hundred thirty three, and so with a COP of three, uh, I could dream to make one thousand watt of heat, and. In the beginning, I could say 200, 300 watt. I, I could definitely here use to heat the, the water tank and then the rest here to heat the air. But um, you see, I, I don't really need this water tank. I do not really would need this uh, ventilator. And this is also very complex. So if I here would make another, another water exchanger and then I, I dream to make uh, black pipes going up to the ceiling and then here so one one turn would be one circle would be about 20 meters and so uh did some calculations <laughs> again these calculations with the heat exchange because it's a uh, very cheap um, for watering hose uh, polyethylene and only 1.2 millimeters thick and only four bar but uh, here for circulation for for heating would be no problem and so I could like say 40 to 50 meters up here and that's exactly here on, on the other side because uh, that's where I normally live you see in the winter I sleep here in my living room no no need to to heat heat the sleeping room okay you see yeah this machine is running and it's not uh, the, the one solar panel is enough to deliver the heat but this Heat exchanger, we are simply both uh, uh, heat, exchange, heat exchangers are, and this is the same water, uh, it's not really working very well. And so I still need to think of something else. Uh, this machine, you see, it has a lot, a lot uh, of free uh, holes here. So if I would get the exact, exact diameter of this copper, and I could really uh, put this. Uh, hot water directly into the same then it would really be as small as the original machine yeah. and and that's what I want to say it would be a nice uh, complete um, concept heating uh, electricity uh, showering water uh, for for a tiny house you see this is, this new th costs about 150 dollar or euro and and so and have a few solar panels on the tiny house and then would you have everything uh, like electricity as I just said and therefore this is not only for me uh, I'm also doing this because it might be a great tutorial how to build a tiny house for let's say dollars that has everything you see uh, it might even uh, generate an income because uh, the you could make electrolyte use the electricity uh, to, to separate uh, salt and then you get uh, uh, 
the components when you decompose salt can be sold and they can be used as a heat um, a heat battery to, to uh, heat uh, for for the winter time and so that's, that's another thing but this is uh, it's, it's it's more than just uh, stupid idea for my stupid train station it's uh, might be a nice uh, complete concept for a tiny house and so well if you like it give some feedback because uh, if it really works then I might really make a, a Kickstarter where it's say uh, really build a, a small tiny house with a complete uh, system for heating and electricity so here coming the two hoses for into going into the chimney and coming from the roof and these So these are my four solar panels. I see here's a bit of water leakage. It's maybe you see it's it's open. It's so here just, and that's a problem here because it's diag it's a 45 degree, and uh, the angle and so really to to get um, almost water up here. So it's it's and here I think it's a hole, and so the water might leakage might be okay so right now it's only this panel it's oh, very cold <laughs> and still the pressure you see if, you see here that the, the glass is still one centimeter banded upwards even so the water only goes to here and it's just let's say half a meter underneath and still it's bent so much and so much First I tear to have a really water going down and here up again on all the four panels. That was really suicide. The pressure down there was so high that the, here the, the mounting was ripped apart. And <coughs> this is a setup underneath that solar panel. So this tube hole and um, that's a uh, nice cheap to, to go through the roof. So this is on the inside and this is over this rough thing and then um, put this underneath and, and then simply rotate a bit then you can make a, a circular hole here. And so just water going here, cut going up and that's you see that's just because here of this diagonal and I had to Holds this here so that the water goes up to there and so that's why I ah, here that's the tube here and then to prevent the water from sucking this downwards and rip up rip the hole here the tanks therefore I, I mounted it here so that the fall is a bit secured and okay now this I think this one centimeter here that's okay and as I said, the problem right now is the heat exchanger. Uh, and if, well, this, pan, what, what I learned is that these solar panels, they have to be mounted horizontal so that the pressure is all, is even on all the four panels. 1000 watt is what goes onto a square meter. And this uh, solar panel is 1.6 square meters. So the, the sun, when it's really a bright sun, is 1,600 watt. Uh, but the solar panel is only 265 watt. It's uh, efficiency. Efficiency of such a solar panel is 17%. That means that 83% of the sun is either reflected or converted into heat. And therefore, for, for a heat pump, you need about twice as much uh, electricity in the form of heat to get a COP of three. So one, let's say 150 watt uh, would be um, 300 watt of heat. And that's what's so nice about uh, this uh, combination with uh, uh, get, uh, cooling the, the solar uh, panel. Yes, because when you have excess uh, electricity, you always have at least twice as much heat underneath uh, the, the solar panel. And so it's perfect combination with, with the heat pump. Okay, bye-bye.